that drip drip Everybody tripping, slipping on my drip Got swag and we drip Got swag and we drip Welcome back Swag Team, it's your boy the Swagologist Back again with another Swag UTV review And today we are doing Falcon and Winter Soldier, episode number two, The Star Spangled Man. Now, this is going to be a full review as always. So if you're worried about spoilers, make sure you go watch that thing on Disney Plus and come back. But if you have seen it, which you should have if you're watching this review, let's get into it. Now, this video, I mean, this episode starts off with them opening a suit bag or whatever. And you can get a sense that it's probably the new Captain America's outfit, the new Cap, which is Cap still once again and we see that dude if you watch the little recap thing that they have in the beginning of these episodes you can see that douche of a cap that they got right now i mean he looks so douchey <laughs> right here i mean he just kept the douche personified but it's okay whatever the rifle owner will eventually get it sadly it won't happen in this episode i still don't know who's gonna end up getting the shield i still want to know who you think is gonna end up getting the shield and being the new cap or if they're even gonna call it cap in the comments below but we'll get to that when we get to it but you can go ahead and shout tell me that right now if you feel we open it up with him opening up that and then we see this dude and actually we get a better feel of who this captain douche aka john walker is aka the new captain america John Walker, we get a little backfield and it humanizes him. We actually feel for him. Later on, we don't feel the same way, but it was interesting to make us have some like connectivity to this guy. And we learn his backstory through his debut on Good Mar Morning America because after he's done um, giving this, we get a real pure human moment from John Walker. We learn that he used to be a football star or whatever in high school and how his wife used to come down and help give him a pep talk and they would win apparently. Then his best friend comes in, colleague from um, the military comes in and gives him a, a pep talk. And they, t they basically talk about how Captain America, like the Star Spangled Man and all the, that jazz is just like part of the job, you know, part of the persona. You know what I'm saying? It's, and, but it's ironic. He said you can't punch your way out of things anymore. But I mean, you would think that's what they would think as, as a civilian becoming a superhero. That's what you would think you would have to do. But they know a little bit better that Captain America was more smart here than he was, you know, I mean, more strong here than he was right here. You know what I mean? So they end up doing that. Then, then you hear the band playing this more modern take to the Star Spangled, uh, <clears throat> the Star Spangled Man's music, you know, and we first hear that in Captain America, the first Avenger, but now we're hearing it in a more modern take with the band at the beginning, and that's how they do the whole Marvel Studios logo, which was pretty dope. I mean, I always love the Marvel Studios logo, it always gets me excited to see that. But yes, we move on to that. And like I said, we learn more about John Walker's backstory on the Good Morning America um, broadcast is broadcasting to the world, their new Captain America. And I'm not going to lie, John Walker's a little um, impressive with the shield now. I, I, I thought only Cap could throw the shield with that, you know, type of like accuracy and velocity and, you know, comeback. But no. Anybody almost can throw it, but it still takes practice or whatever, apparently. Because unless this dude has powers, but he hasn't been showing them. And I don't think he has powers. But later on, when we get to this part, we feel like there's there there is a possibility, you know. But I still think he. That's another thing I think is going to happen that y'all could definitely talk to me about in the comment section. Do you think John Walker will or will not get powers? in this ep in this series i think he will but i'm not totally sure because if y'all do know john walker is from the 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 comics and he did take up the mantle of cap before becoming u.s agent now, i don't know if that's gonna go down that road or not and he did have a sidekick named battlestar which is the the so happens to be the the friend the military friend that gave him the pep talk before he went out there on good morning america because we later on see them after this but during the good and more good morning america broadcast we see that bucky is actually watching this broadcast and seeing for the first time that someone else got the shield 
and we see the devastation and the hurt in Bucky's eyes and the way Sebastian Stan delivered this through all his face and his acting was beautiful. But anyways, Bucky was looking devastated at the fact that his long lost brother is now being imitated or replaced by this dude when he saw that he chose Sam. So why would this dude have the shield? It's beyond him and he can't understand it, can't even fathom it. And you could see all that through his face without him saying a word, especially when the dude that's supposedly the new cap, John Walker, says to the lady that he he know, he's he's never known Steve, but he he's studied his whole Avengers career or whatever, and he feels like he knows what to do when he's paid his dues, and he feels like he's kind of a brother adjacent or whatever, and a, uh, and then like that brother line I know hit Bucky really in the feels because that is his true brother, you know what I mean? That was crazy to see, and that, it was really amazing to see how great Sebastian Stan is as an actor in that one scene alone so then we go from there and we see how sam's reacting to this because now they have the cap is back posters everywhere should be cap is back <laughs> but cap is back posters everywhere and the the nice gentleman that was helping him through the first battle against bortok in the first episode he was there and he was like, he doesn't seem like a bad guy. Do you know him? He's like, no, I, I don't know. But he doesn't seem like a bad guy or whatever. But then he's giving him a rundown of his next mission. And then all of a sudden, here comes. And you can see how Sam reacts to it. He's like, oh, man, here comes Winter Soldier coming up. Bucky comes up upset and asking him, how could you give up the shield, Sam? <laughs> and Sam's like, um, nice to see you too, Buck, or whatever. You know what I'm saying? And then Bucky's like, why would you give up the shield, Sam? And Sam's like, why would you like be upset with me? You think I'm not upset about this too? And he's all like, you know, you didn't have the right to do this or whatever. Did you know this was going to happen? And he's like, no, why would I, you know, you think this made me feel good? And they're trying, talking, about, he's talking about how he sh he's basically still hurt by this fact that this new guy decided that he's cap, basically, you know what I mean? And how disrespected Steve is be, um, being, you know, treated right now, you know what I mean? By this simple fact, you know what I mean? And then, and, and also this is just not right. This is not right. This is all wrong, you know, for John Walker to be capped. So this is how they end up <coughs> reu reuniting, but sadly under the wrong circumstances. Um, one of the running jokes in this specific episode and probably in future episodes, but it might just be this episode here, is the reference to the big three and the big three is something that sam has decided and i don't think is the only person that's came up with it i think this is just all military and people conversating around the um around the world is the big three is what like he's saying he's they're trying to fight these groups and trying to figure out if they're part of the big three or working for the big three and 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 this is what sam tells bucky and bucky's like what's the big three what are you talking about he's like um aliens androids or monsters i mean or wizards aliens androids or wizards and he's like there's no such thing as wizards <laughs> he's like yes it is every time we fight we fight one of those three <laughs> and i was like and then when he said that i was like you know what he's got it right and then he was like there's no such thing as wizards he's like dr strange and he's like, no, 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 Dr. Strange is a sorcerer. He's like, ah, ah, Dr. Strange, um, a sorcerer is a wizard without a hat. Think about it. See? Yeah. Just came up with that. <laughs> but that's beside the point. These dudes ain't magical. They have super power. Like, they're, like, super strong. Un abnormally strong, you know what I'm saying? So, somehow the super soldier serum is still out and about once again and then this episode expands on that which is crazy but we'll get to that after this, this fight so one of the funniest things that happened in this episode partly from the stuff that's happened in the trailer where he asks him if he has a plan and he ignores him flies out or whatever there's another long one of the one of the funny things is this long running joke about how Bucky likes to stare at people he just stares this just gives this ongoing stare and I think it's part of the reason is because his mind has been blinked so many times by or controlled that the, the only way he can stay calm is just staring straight out you know he probably has a, always has 
something on his mind for another reason that he does that. But it's a long running joke in this episode and I kind of dig it. It's, it is pretty funny about his character. They're staring off at each other. Then, like I said, he flies out. He doesn't even give him the time of day. So then Bucky looking around and he's like, where's the shoot? And he's like, there isn't any. He's like, I mean, we're at 200 feet. It's too high. To, I mean, it's too low for a shoot. He's like, I don't need one anyway. And something that I find interesting is if you think about Captain America, Steve Rogers, he would always jump out of a plane no matter if it's a good spot for a shoot or not. And most of the um, second, um, out of the two times, he definitely jumped one time without a shoot at all. <laughs> and it, but he, you know, being Steve, knows what to do to keep from falling. Plus, he had the shield. Bucky, on the other hand, decided, I'm going to be Cap-esque and jump out this window just because I got this vibranium arm. <laughs> And then he does a tragic epic fail and falls. <laughs> it was funny how he fell. And then Red Wing comes up and you hear Sam in the background talking about, hey, you know I recorded all of that, right? Because <laughs> their banter throughout this episode is hilarious. I love their, their back and forth, um, which I knew I was going to enjoy. It's very Hobbs and Shaw-esque. It's very funny in general and they've always had this banter but now it's on 11 in this episode so he said but then there's something that's foreshadowed when Bucky's like get that out of my way um, get that out of my face Sam before I break it and he's like okay okay meet me upstairs or whatever right so then they meet up and then Red Wings around his head and he swings at it he's like hey man chill out before you break it <laughs> and I'm like oh man they keep foreshadowing this keep saying it so then they find out they see that the flag smashers are taking this stuff and putting it in the in those 18 wheelers and they're, and they're like hella strong Bucky's like getting more intel but Bucky wants to go head fast in there because he has a vibranium arm he think he can take them all but Sam's like I can fly who gives a shit look we gotta wait you know what I'm saying and see how many people's out there. Bucky going by sight and old school tactics is saying he only sees two, but then Sam's like, well, let's see what Red Wing sees. Let's see what Red Wing sees. Oh, oh, four, five. <laughs> He's like, okay, see? Yeah, sometimes you have to wait. So then they see that there's a, a another person inside of the truck, which leads them to believe there's an, another hostage on the truck. So when they, when they, as soon as they pull, as soon as the flag smashers, as soon as the Flag Smashers pull off, they decide to go full-fledged. And it was cool to see Bucky run fast because I forgot that he has abilities other than his arm is strong. You know what I'm saying? I'm thinking his arms are strong, but no, I forget that he has super um, speed too because I remember in Civil War, he decided to use a bike when he could have been running just like Cap and um, Thing. Now, I don't know if he had it in that movie or not. I'll have to go back. I'm feeling kind of... Like, you should take my nerd card. But it's okay. Doesn't matter. He has the super serum, and he's running <laughs> in this episode. Like, Kavanaugh, it's kind of cool to see. Bucky ends up <clears throat> catching up to one of the 18-wheelers and opens it. The one that has the hostage in it. And he looks around, and they see that the X-Smashers are stealing vaccines. Now, they're not sure why that is. Still not sure as of right now what side they're on, what they're trying to do we know what their overall goal is to change things back before the avengers bring everybody back they want it to go after the blip i mean you know they want to go back to when the blip took place back to those five years with no one none of the avengers half of the avengers being gone and half of the world being gone they want to go back to that space and area so we don't know why that is then all of a sudden the girl <clears throat> a little girl pops up and she seems to have been the hostage that we saw earlier in <clears throat> from outside of the 18 wheeler that Red Wing has saw infrared, right? And she pops up and then she goes back and then she pops up and <clears throat> Bucky's all like, hi, um, are you okay? And she um, ends up smiling. He smiles, but the way she smiles, I was like, uh-oh. And then... Wow! Hits Bucky with this um, Spartan kick, kicks him straight out of the truck, and you're like, "Oh man!" So then you come to find out that this is the chick that was in the first episode that we thought possibly was a guy that body slammed your boy in the first episode, and now we come to find out that 
the leader of the Flag Smashers seems to be not necessarily a little girl, but she's basically a little girl when it comp compares to who they thought, you know, <clears throat> the leader would be. She has super strength as well. So she jumps on top of the thing and now the fight is commenced, boy. It's Falcon. Falcon comes in, flies in. Uh, no, Red Wing flies up and starts shooting at her. I'm like, oh man, did, yep. <laughs> and she grabs it and breaks it with a knee. And of course, Bucky's like, I've always wanted to do that. So they always get the good comedy of how uh, Bucky and the winner, I mean, Bucky and Sam's relationship is, Bucky and Sam's relationship is throughout this ep episode. And I really enjoy that. But it was messed up to see Red Wing go, which made me think, well, now, would this give a chance for Sam to get an actual hawk as Red Wing? I doubt it, but like maybe genetic, genetically enhanced hawk or something. It'd be kind of cool. I don't know if they're going to do that. They're probably not. Maybe this just helps him become, you know, Captain America with the wings. You know what I mean? Um, by taking Red Wing out of the equation, but maybe he'll have Red Wing by the next episode. I'm not totally sure yet, but it was crazy to fathom that they got rid of Red Wing, but that's where my mind went. It was like, maybe he will, he'll finally actually get an actual animal to be his sidekick or like basically, you know, take place as the actual Red Wing from the comics. That'd be very interesting if they decide to go that route. I doubt they will, but it would be cool. So it's just a thought that I had. The fight is going on and it kind of looks like our guys are going to lose for a second. Then all of a sudden, Cap Shield goes, wow, one of the one of the um, chest of the Flag Smashers and New Cap <laughs> comes up out of nowhere, John Walker on a helicopter throwing that, throwing the, the shield like he is a badass. And I mean, like I said now, <laughs> as much as I don't like the fact that there's a new Cap right now, and it is Cap, that there's a new Cap, he's impressive. He, 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 he knows how to throw that shield and I give him another another added bonus that they did very well. That in the last episode, when he looks like a douche right here, you know what I'm saying? He does not look like a douche when you first see him in Good Morning America. I mean, they got, he got the blue eyes. You know, he looks like he looks like a good like a good substitute cap. He's not cap, never gonna be cap, but he is a good looking substitute cap, no homo. So it was like, okay, I see what you're going with right now. I get it. But um, he he was impressive. He came through, bow, boom, bang, and this is like with no powers. And I think it's more impressive to me just because I didn't think you could throw the shield like that without powers. But then I forget in the trailer, you see Sam kind of throw it at one point in the in the in the trailer. So it is throwable like that. But he throws that thing like a beast. Now he throws it like Cap. Like I mean, hey. They kind of call a spade a spade, you know what I'm saying? I'm not calling it a cap a cap, though. I'll call, him a ca I'll call it a cap a cap, but I won't call it cap as in cap. You know what I mean? Not gonna happen. <laughs> no, sir, John Walker. You're not getting that kind of love from me. But you can't throw a shield, I'll tell you that much. And then this other dude comes out of nowhere, and I'm like, who the hell is that? <laughs> and that's where we get the whole Battlestar guy from. Because after the battle commences, and... Like I said, dude's impressive. I me, mean, his boy, Battlestar, is getting jacked up. He's like, hey, John, where you at? Comes through with the the, uh, the pistol and the gun. Blah, shoots dude in the chest on, on the right bicep, knocks him back. Then old girl punches um, Cap. Cap, I'm going to call him John. Freak that. He's not Cap. John, he punches John. John falls off the edge of the 18-wheeler. And then... She takes um, Battlestar and throw his ass off the ship, uh, off the, I keep calling it a ship, sorry, the 18-wheeler. And right when he's falling, Cap impressively throws, I, I don't know why I'm giving the respect. I'm going to say Cap, but you'll see what Cap I'm talking about. He throws, <laughs> throws the shield and gets under him. I was like, okay, all right, I see you, Cap. You still Cap, but I see you, though. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? So... Then he gets up talking about that was a bad idea. Yeah, right. Do you know this chick got powers? No, you don't. <laughs> but you're going to learn today. She punch that dude in the chest. He hits a car. That's why I'm like, does he have powers? I don't think he has powers. Once again, I still don't think this dude has powers. But it's possible. It's a small possibility. Because I know y'all like, well, he had a pistol, so he wouldn't have powers. But if you remember from the first Captain America, first Avengers, 
Captain America himself, the actual Cap, Steve Rogers, used a pistol as well. So that doesn't necessarily mean he doesn't have powers. Because he throws the thing like he got powers. That's all I'm saying. He throws the thing immaculately well. So I gotta give him at least props for that. But he's still Cap Deuce. You know what I'm talking about? After the battle commences, more banter between Sam and Bucky while they're walking down the street because they lost, basically. And they had to. he had to save Buck because he was under the 18-wheeler. End up walking down the street, and then all of a sudden, here comes Captain Douche and Battlestar. But this is when we learn that that's Battlestar's actual, like, his superhero name. And John Walker convinces Sam and Bucky to get into the vehicle. They have their little spiel. They learn a little bit about what they're trying to do and where they're at now with this situation. And then, like I said, we learned that his name's Battlestar and all that crap. And that just makes Sam want to get out of the vehicle. I mean, um, Bucky want to get out of the vehicle. And then Sam ends up getting out of the vehicle when dude decides to say, I want to be the best Captain America I can be. And it'd be a whole lot easier if I could have Cap's wingman by my side. And then, and then, like, dude was like, see that last, it's always the last line. And he gets up out of the vehicle as well. We're back and we see that the Flag Smashers have found residence with people. And it seems like by what they were saying that the people have, are follow, um, are now six months later from when they started. Because he was like, six months ago, you, you I couldn't believe how many civ um, civilians are with the cause now. So now it seems like there are civilians that are supporting what the Flag Smashers are trying to do which we still don't really know exactly what they're trying to do, but it sounds like they're pissed off that, I think she said the GSC, correct me if I'm wrong in the comment section below with the, the abbreviation, but she said the GSC or whatever care more about the people that came back than the people that never left. So they still want, like I said, that, that, that five years to be back like it was then it's still instead of how it is now that everybody's come back they wanted to be like it was before and she's like after tomorrow there's no going back so they're doing something big with these these vaccines or whatever that they're taking wherever they're taking them and i'm very curious as to what they're doing still someone's following them trying to kill them especially whoever they stole from from in there because someone is texting carly and the leader and telling her that you stole from me, but I'm going to find you and I'm going to kill you. So there's like whoever they stole from is not playing any games, but we can't, <clears throat> we're not exactly sure at this moment who that is. We just know that they're on the run and they already found them and they are able to find them through different channels on the internet. We see Bucky and Sam on a, on the plane. Sam has been using to do all these missions he's been going on currently and Bucky's like, we got to go get the shield. We got to steal the shield and do this ourselves. But Sam's like, we can't do that. Then he references how in Civil War, how last time they stole the shield that Sharon Carter, that is Agent Sharon Carter, was, you know, branded in the state. And then they had to be on the run for two years, Sam and Steve. So he doesn't <clears throat> want to do that again, of course. They have no choice. They, have, they, they don't. They have no leads, they have nothing. But then you see Bucky go looking. He has that look again, like he knows more than he's been letting on. And this was the biggest reveal to me, the craziest thing to me. Apparently, there was a super soldier decades ago, but it wasn't, it was after Steve, not pre Steve, but after Steve. Because this was when, back in, during. Bucky's Winter Soldier days, he ended up fighting this gentleman in one of the wars. And obviously this gentleman took half of Sam's arm, his metal arm at this point, but they ended up putting the man in jail. And he was an African-American super soldier and they put him in jail for 30 years. And I'm like, wow, that's nuts. And his name is Isaiah. Now in the comics, there was an Isaiah same guy, same name, uh, but it, it was a little different. He had took up the super, the the Captain America costume and mantle, saved the day, 
but they put him in jail for 17 years for doing so. I found that out from a little bit of research, but I didn't dive too deep. I just was curious if this is a comic book character or not. There is a lot of Easter eggs in this episode. Um, I'd highly, highly suggest you watch um, one of the Watch Mojo Top 10s that they dropped recently. It'll give you a lot of this juicy information like that. But I thought that was crazy that there was a super soldier that fought Bucky that Bucky didn't tell nobody about. And they were black. <laughs> so that definitely hit me more than it would hit others. You know what I mean? But I was like, wow, that's crazy. So like, but what does this mean necessarily? That's the question. Is the super serum, well, obviously there's something going on with it right now whether it's still out or these people were put on ice too i doubt it so it's very peculiar what's going on here and but during that exchange isaiah referenced hydra by saying your people wasn't done with me either now i for some reason i caught that immediately but when sam was talking to bucky he thought he meant like a white person or whatever when he said you people but no he meant hydra and this leads to the fact that we're going to talk to zemo they dropped the big bad's name so we're finally going to see the big bad villain in the mid-season finale next week because obviously if it's six episodes this is the third episode so it's the halfway mark so this would be a mid-season finale for any other episode any other show so i'm hoping the third episode is going to be big big bad and awesome i'm very excited about next episode and we also find out that the people chasing the flag smashers and carly are called uh power um he's called power breaker and he has a uh, army obviously because she was um dude was like they found us how much time do we got none it's Power Breakers men. They're on the way. And he's like, Power Breakers men. Then all of a sudden, these guys and these um, three SUVs come up. And they're all military with military-grade weapons. At least uh, look look military. Or maybe even police men. Because the one dude look like a, a deputy. Or, I mean, a, a, a captain with a, 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 a bulletproof vest and a little jacket over it. A little small jacket. And he was like, oh, they got away. Because one of the, um, one of the, flags, um, one of the flag smashers that helped. Carly with her speech earlier in the episode was like I'll take care of it and he runs out he gets shot up and they don't get to him so I wonder who Power Breaker is does Power Breaker work with Zemo is Zemo even really doing anything up until Cap I mean up until Bucky and Sam go and address him in the next episode. I'm very excited for the next episode because now we get to see the big bad and hopefully he's going to get up out of there and do some big bad things. I'm very excited about that. Maybe we'll see Sharon because she was referenced in the last episode as well as Zemo. So if both of them got referenced. I'm hoping to see both of them in the next episode. But who's to say? Who's to know? But let me know how you feel about the episode number two in the comment section below. Also, if you're new here and you're trying to join the Swag Team, make sure you hit the subscribe button down below. Hit it right here when it pops up on the side. Also, if you want to be the first Swag Team to see a video when it pops up on the channel, make sure you hit that subscribe button. It'll pop right up. I mean, hit that notification bell. It'll pop right up right when you subscribe. So you hit that subscribe button then that bell will pop up you click that ding then you never miss a video pops on the channel whether it's on your computer cell phone tablet or whatever so make sure you do that so you don't miss on any of the swag when it drops but yes let me know how you feel about episode two of the falcon and winter soldier the star spangled man did you enjoy it i enjoyed it did you like it a lot did you love it did you hate it did you thought it was boring did you thought it was action-packed let me know all that in the comment section below also let me know those things that i was wondering about how you felt in the beginning of this review and if you like this review, make sure you give it a big thumbs up. It helps with the channel. But if you didn't like it, I ain't tripping. Look at Jordan, I ain't pippin. And until the next video, I love y'all 3000. I'll holla. Peace.